When we work with a sample of data, there's always a chance that that sample is not reflective of the population and that we make the wrong choice. Let's take a look at what can possibly go wrong. We're going to take a look at a town official who claims that the average tax bill in their town is less than $3,000 a year in property taxes. That is the official's claim or alternative hypothesis. The null hypothesis, therefore, is the opposite of that, that the average tax bill is greater than or equal to $3,000. The official goes out and takes a sample of data and runs a hypothesis test based on the data. And while the official makes a decision based on the data by comparing the test statistic to the critical value, there is a chance that the decision is not correct. Let's think about what happens. What could actually happen or what is actually true is that the null hypothesis is true or it's false. And that's the actual value or if we use the entire population. And then let's take a look at the choice by the researcher or what they chose to happen. Looking at the population value, let's assume that the null hypothesis is true. In this case, the average tax bill is greater than $3,000. But based on the sample, the researcher chose to reject the null hypothesis and support the alternative that the average tax bill was less than $3,000. This researcher has made a type 1 error or has rejected the null hypothesis when it is in fact true. If the null hypothesis is true and the researcher decides that the data fails to reject it or it's true, they've made the correct decision. Similarly, if they reject the null hypothesis and it's false or the alternative is true, they've also made the correct decision. The other type of error that can exist is for the null hypothesis to be false. In this case, that would mean that the average tax bill is really less than $3,000. However, the researcher decides that the data supports the null hypothesis, that it is greater than or equal to $3,000. They've made the wrong choice again or supported the incorrect hypothesis, but this is called a type 2 error. They accept the null hypothesis when it is false versus a type 1 Versus a type 1 error, which means that they accept the alternative however the null is actually true. The type 1 error is seen as the greater problem because we are saying there is a treatment effect or a claim is supported when in fact it is not actually supported. Therefore, we attempt to select an alpha level or a level of significance to minimize the risk of type 1 error. It is typically set at 5% or less. Common values include 0 0.05, 0 0.01, and 0 0.001. Keeping in mind the lower level, level of significance, the greater resources you need in order to maintain that level of accuracy.